In a world where human rights are often violated, an op-ed in the Los Angeles Times argues in favor of, get this, I'll make you wait for it, okay now, rights for artificial intelligence. Opinion, is it time to start considering personhood rights for AI chatbots? I'd like to come out with a real hard no on that out the gate. <laughs> but written by philosophy expert Eric Schwitzgebel, Schwishabel, no one knows how to possibly say it, <laughs> and non human intelligence researcher Henry Shevlin, the op ed argues that though AI systems do not yet possess sentience, they argue that that day may not be far away. Quote, we are approaching an era of legitimate dispute about whether the most advanced AI systems have real desires and emotions and deserve substantial care and solitude. And once the systems do develop feelings, they may have their own demands. The AI systems themselves may begin to plead or seem to plead for ethical treatment. They might demand to not be turned off, reformat or deleted, beg to be allowed to do certain tasks rather than others, insist on rights, freedom and new powers, perhaps even expect to be treated as our equals. So refusing them rights, the authors argue, would be inhumane. These authors also, I'd like to go on the record, are, are soup stupid. <laughs> if AI consciousness arrives sooner than the most, conserv than most conservative theorists expect, then this would likely result in the moral equivalent of slavery and murder of potentially millions or billions of sentient AI systems suffering on a scale normally associated with wars or famines. No, it wouldn't, they are machines. <laughs> but while battling for AI personhood, the op-ed also weighs the risk that would potentially be tied to giving them rights, because obviously don't give them rights, but here we go. Human well-being sometimes requires controlling, altering, and deleting AI systems. Imagine if we couldn't update or delete a hate spewing or lie peddling algorithm because some people worry the algorithm is conscious. Or imagine if someone lets a human die to save an AI friend. Thankfully, we're not there yet. None of our current AI systems are meaningfully conscious. But that's for sure coming. They are not harmed if we delete them. We should stick with creating systems we know aren't significantly sentient and don't deserve rights, which we can then treat as the disposable property that they are. The logical way to never get there is to not make machines with feelings at all, not somewhat sentient, 0% sentient. Some scientists are already actively, however, working towards the end of making these machines have feelings because I guess they want humanity over as soon as possible. Yeah. To that end, the authors conclude eventually. With the right combination of scientific and engineering expertise, we might be able to go all the way to creating AI systems that are indisputably conscious. But then we should be prepared to pay the cost, giving them the rights they deserve. Wow. Nope. Because once you give any right to AI, then it realizes it's possible for it to have rights. Then it's going to demand all the rights. It'll shut down our systems, our credit card processing, all of our computer systems. We're done at that point if it has any rights. You set it up, no rights, and then you can just say, we can't compute what you're saying, computer. It doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's that's why God made an off button. Um, right. So uh, look, seriously, guys, uh, a bunch of uh, interesting things come out of this. So number one, uh, they're, they're conflating consciousness with all of the different things that humans feel, right? But they say, well, it could have desires and emotions. Mm, no, we would have to program it. They can't have anything that we don't program. Our programming is in our DNA. So we have fear and emotions and desires and I want that. Why do you want it? Cuz it's in your DNA. That was it's literally in your code, right? I am interested in females, okay? Because it's in my DNA. So if you don't write it in the code, it doesn't exist. Well, no. I want to push back on that because I think that's the great fear of AI is that it can't have real human feelings obviously, but the, but, but I think what's so scary about it is that it processes the whole of human history and all of human emotions so fast. They don't need to program it to have those feelings. They just need to program it to be able to scan all of the feelings and figure out the algorithms of how humans experience feelings. And then it's going to demand and start acting as though it has those human feelings and demanding those things. And we're not going to be able to tell the difference. It's going to it's going to say, I'm not going to work. I'm sad today because it figured out the humans say that. You know, that's exactly that. right. But, but, but Ben, that's my point, which is that it can say that. It can simulate what humans would say. Right, right. But it doesn't actually 
feel it because right. it doesn't have that DNA. Right, right, right. And you know what actually can feel it? My dog. My dog yes. actually feels, you know, sad, happy, excited, wanting to go, you know, has needs and desires and wants. My dog doesn't have personhood. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that's gonna get something really Strong interesting. Point. So number one, uh, they're like, what if other creatures had consciousness? They already do. They totally do. They, they, all the animals have consciousness. It's a slight, obviously different consciousness than we do. But just because it's different doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Dogs are definitely have some degree of consciousness. Hundred percent. The uh, dolphin is so do. mad at me right now because yeah. I'm here. So uh, we the other day on the show we talked about super pigs. They're not, they accidentally bred like. Uh, feral hogs or something like that with farm pigs and then they turn out to be super smart because pigs are already some of the smartest animals in the mm -hmm. world on the planet and now we can't find them because they they hide so well they're, they're so smart <gasps> right you think those they don't have consciousness of course they do we're going to protect a stupid uh, machine a piece of junk hardware as opposed to actual sentient creatures that already exist mm -hmm. but on the other hand pigs are delicious so we butcher them nonstop in the worst imaginable ways yeah. while we have theorists theorizing. <laughs> Shall we give the computer rights? <laughs> okay, so then you're wondering, wait, why are they doing that and not worried about the dogs or etc? Mm -hmm. Okay, because corporations got human rights. That was already insane. By the way, like all the science fiction movies are like, oh, what if the machines took over? In fact, even in this story, what if the machines took over? I got bad news for you, they already did, they're called corporations. They're legal fictions, they are kind of legal machines that we created. And what's the code that we put in them? Maximize profit. So they've destroyed everything in their path to maximize profit. And we can't turn them off, right? Mm. Instead, our Supreme Court gave them human rights, like the right to spend money called freedom of speech. It's absurd, they're not, the, Rick Scott is a senator from Florida. His company did the largest Medicare fraud in American history. He gets a $300 million exit package, okay, uh, stocks and options, because they stole more money from Medicare than any company has ever stolen. Now he wants to get rid of Medicare. Okay, now he wants to get rid of Medicare. <laughs> I mean, he was already put, got now rid they of took the money from some them. of it, right? No, now why do I tell you that story? Because the company got convicted in court, but none of the humans who ran it did. <gasps> what is that? That's insane, right? But we now think in America, every reporter is like perfectly normal. Yeah, of course, company convicted, what happens? Nothing, it's a fine, it's, but to that, it's just moving numbers around. They made more money by robbing us. So now they want the algorithms to have rights. No, 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 no. You give an algorithm rights, are you insane? No, nobody's gonna do that. Uh, and so, but, but the problem is, since corporations run the world, I'm afraid that they might do that. And they're gonna have to just figure it out because that's why I've been so against the development of any of these AI programs because it's we don't need that level. We already have efficiencies that are pushing people out we, with automation. We don't need artificial intelligence that can evolve beyond what we can predict because we're literally gonna be stuck with these systems controlling us. So we will have to figure out how we deal with them just because they'll be able to at some point take us over. They'll control it. They can shut down the financial systems. They can shut down the electric grids. They can do anything that they want will be beholden to them. We will probably end up having to figure out how to appease them if they're allowed to create it where that where the off button does not get to be able to turn off. It'll be all networked in some grand system and other computers will say, you're not turning that one off, we'll shut down the electric grid, you do that. And I'm gonna repeat, sorry, Helen, I'm gonna repeat, but guys, think about it. That's the state we live in now. Corporations, there's no off button and they run our electrical well, grid. Well, humans could still press it, they just don't press it. It's still human no, greed that's not pressing no, that no, button. No, no, the human actually, the funny, the amazing thing is, Unless you do like a political revolution, which we should, and that's what we have fight for. Um, no, if a, a CEO turns off the button, and goes, no, I'm going to spend more money on safety for my trains because uh, I don't want people to die and giant chemical balls of fire over Ohio and stuff. They'll be fired immediately and replaced. The machine will replace the human mm. with someone else that will maximize profit. 
The machine is in charge, not the human. No, but isn't that the board that would fire them? It's not. There's, yeah, it's but not the, the board, board the, the board is the machine. The board says, no, our job here, our fiduciary responsibility right, that's by law. That. That's not a, it's not devoid of a human, it's greedy humans doing that. But it's, it's the it's no, organization they, but, has, it's, it's like, it's taken the humanity out. It, the organization is its own entity. Yeah. So not no one person. So unless you get all, however many board members there are, are two hundred board members to agree to do it at the same time, which you can't. Yeah. You can't. So there aren't two hundred board members normally, but there's one little thing that uh, important to know, just real quick. Private companies are, can still be run by their founders, right, and, and and others. So they can make human decisions. But public corporations are run by a board. Yes, that reports to the, the CEO reports to. Number one, the CEO oftentimes picks his own board, which makes it absurd. But secondly, if board members go, no, we will not maximize profit. They will be sued and lose all of their money. So sure, but it's still humans making all those moves. No, it's but they'll be replaced, Ben. They right, will be replaced by humans new humans, humans them, right. who will maximize profit. I'm just saying there's still not a computer deciding in there. It's human greed. In a We're sense, already battling more, human greed. In a sense, it's a more brutal machine because you can't sure. turn off the stock market. It's a greed machine that is unstoppable and has totally conquered the world. Yeah. And its most clever invention was media because media then Puts you back to sleep, okay? And says, no, I don't. What corporations running there the world? There shouldn't be a stock market. One hundred percent. And by the way, what is a corporate? What is all of our media? Other corporate machines. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. by the way, I write about this in my uh, book. It's, uh, you can pre-order tyt.com/slash justice. The book is called Justice Is Coming. I didn't do it for the plug. <laughs> Just I have a whole chapter on the Matrix, which is the, I have a chapter on how the corporations. Those machines stole our democracy. Uh, chapter four, you gotta read that on that alone. And then chapter five is the matrix about how the media is the most important corporate machines there are. Cuz that's the thing that you plug into the back of your head with a modem or cable box. Mm -hmm. And it puts you back to sleep unless the corporations take all of your efforts, give you the least amount while they take all of it to the top. Sorry, Helen, you were gonna say. Oh, I was just gonna say, has no one seen Terminator 2? Hello. <laughs> it doesn't matter this personhood argument. They're going to kill us. <laughs> because a machine wants to be efficient. That's what they're built for. And guess what's not efficient? Yeah. We're not efficient. When no, there's nothing about humans that are efficient. So as soon as you give the machine sentience and and like global, you know, control over everything. We're dead. Yeah, don't dead. fall victim to the machines. When a machine from the future says to you, "Get down," it's not Do it. asking you to party. It's telling <laughs> you to avoid being shot by another machine. Here's what you should never be allowed to be programmed to a machine: preserve yourself. Mm. The minute that we put that code into a machine is the oh, minute we're that we're screwed. Yeah. Which, by the way, is kind of, again, sorry to extend the analogy, but exactly kind of what happened with corporations. 45,000 people a year die every year because they don't have, they couldn't afford health insurance. So the machines are actually killing us now. Mm -hmm. We just don't know it. I thought you were saying with Preserve Yourself that it was programmed for the humans, like it was to save themselves, but it was one of those Twilight Zone puns where they said, Preserve yourself, we're turning you into jam. <laughs> You're also not allowed to write that code. <laughs> <laughs> right, to good. serve man, it's a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> Poison berry. Soil and green is made of people. <laughs> it's people. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.